Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Drug Stability Testing 101, How to Ensure Your Pharmaceutical Testing Can Handle the Heat. I am Michelle Ashton of Labroos, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by Labroots and brought to you by Thermo Fisher Scientific. To learn more, visit thermofisher.com slash chambers. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. This webinar is educational and thus offers free continuing education credits. Please click on the continuing education credit window at the bottom of your screen to obtain your credits. I'd like to now welcome our speakers, Felicia Pierre-Louis, Senior Product Manager at Thermo Fisher Scientific, and Bernie Schwartz, Commercial Manager at Thermo Fisher Scientific. Our speakers will now begin their presentations. Thank you, Michelle, and thank all of you for joining us today. We're looking forward to providing an overview on drug stability. Before we get started, Bernie and I will introduce ourselves. As Michelle mentioned, I'm a Senior Product Manager at Thermo Fisher Scientific. I've been at the company for about three years now and I lead the development and innovation strategy for environmental chambers and incubators. And it's been such a joy working with the researchers that use these chambers and incubators to make their impact on the world. Bernie. Thank you, Felicia, and thank you everyone for joining. Hello from Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. Again, my name is Bernie Schwartz. I'm a commercial manager for Thermo Fisher Scientific. My passion is working with the research community to identify the products and solutions to help solve the complex analytical, analytical problems. With, 30, with over 30 years in the industry, I've spent most of my time in labs, first working on the technical side, where I saw firsthand how equipment fits into the workflows, to now where I support and promote innovative products. I look forward to talking to you later in this presentation. Felicia will now take us Thank you, Bernie. Yes, today we'll be reviewing why stability testing is important and the regulations that dictate stability testing. There are testing parameters that guide stability testing, as well as methods of which forced segregation is one. We'll talk briefly about how drug stability testing provides data that can be extrapolated to different climate zones. Then we'll end with Bernie on a discussion about technology that facilitates successful drug stability testing. Let's get started off on the same page. First of all, drug stability testing is the process of testing the quality of a drug, either drug substance or drug product, over time and under different environmental factors like temperature, humidity, pH, and light. This testing process is important because drugs are produced with a variety of active pharmaceutical ingredients, APIs, and inactive ingredients. Depending on the drug formulation, the drug will have different rates of solubility, permeability, and stability, which then impacts its quality, safety, and efficacy over time. Stability testing evaluates the physical, chemical, and microbiological changes in pharmaceutical products over time from environmental factors. It's critical to understand a pharmaceutical product's performance in order to formulate and sustain a high-quality product. Each of these aspects can potentially impact the efficiency and integrity of a product, which may eventually impact the consumer's health. For example, aspirin tablets are supposed to be stored at room temperature and in a dry place to preserve its efficiency and shelf life. If, store, if stored incorrectly, like a medicine cabinet in a humid bathroom, it will degrade and produce acidic acid, which gives off, gives off a vinegar-like smell. The aspirin is now less effective and it may irritate the consumer. Stability testing is used in three ways related to pharmaceutical products. First, it's used for drug stability testing to determine a stability profile necessary to both prove a drug formulation's performance and safety. 
Then the product is tested to determine a reliable shelf life and recommended storage condition. Further, package testing can confirm appropriate packaging and container closures to support safe distribution to consumers and storage until the shelf life expiration date. As pharmaceutical manufacturers test their products, there are compliance regulations that must be followed. These manufacturers not only perform the necessary stability, shelf life, and package testing to distribute a safe and effective product, they must also provide evidence of proper testing protocols and procedures to support product manufacturing through distribution and on to consumer consumption. And each country has a health authority which is responsible to enforce the rules, regulations, and issue guidelines to regulate drug development, as well as licensing, registration, manufacturing, marketing, and labeling of pharmaceutical products. Pharmaceuticals are the most highly regulated industry in the world, accordingly. The International Council for Harmonization, ICH for short, brings together international regulatory authorities and the pharmaceutical industry to ensure the safety, quality, and efficacy of medicines and me me medical devices globally. Accordingly, the ICH has two main guidelines for stability testing of pharmaceutical products and development. Q1A contains the overall guidelines for stability testing around the effects of temperature and humidity, including batch selection, testing frequency, and storage conditions while Q1B contains guidelines for how light should be tested in addition to the parameters mentioned in Q1A. Other guidelines provided by ICH deal with stability testing related to pharmaceutical products that have been developed and are, are being submitted for registration. Stability testing is based around four key parameters, temperature, light, humidity, and pH that affect the stability of a drug. On the next four slides, we're going to look at each testing parameter. Temperature is one of the most crucial factors in drug stability. All pharmaceutical products must be stored at suitable temperatures to avoid thermal acceleration of decomposition, resulting in physical, chemical, or microbiological changes in pharmaceutical products. For example, products exposed to too high or too low temperatures may lose active ingredient content or alter its performance. A large number of pharmaceutical products are sensitive to light. Light can create chemical changes that decrease potency or efficacy. The rate of photochemical reaction or photolysis depends on the intensity of the radiation source and transmission characteristics of the packaging itself. For example, photo products of a drug due to light exposure can be harmful to the consumer and cause phototoxic, photoallergic, or photosensitization reactions upon administration. Humidity can have a powerful effect on the physical, chemical, or microbiological aspects in pharmaceutical products. For example, low humidity can have physical and chemical effects that cause products to dry and stick together while high humidity can offer a breeding ground for viruses, bacteria, mold, etc., that impact the microbiological stability of a product. pH is an important factor in the stabili stabili stabilization of a drug substance. The major degradation pathways in include hydrolysis. A hydrolysis is generally acid or base catalyzed and can be measured through pH testing. pH profiles help determine the best buffer to use, for example, during drug formulation to maintain drug stability. Forced degradation is a type of stress study that is completed in different pH solutions in the presence of oxygen and light and at elevated temperatures and humidity levels to determine the stability of the drug substance. After forced segregation studies, accelerated stability testing is completed to determine shelf life and storage conditions for early toxicological and clinical studies. Long-term stability studies will also be initiated on both the active pharmaceutical ingredient and the drug product with storage at accelerated and long-term conditions. These studies reduce the need to run tests in different regions of the world to test different climate zones. 
Drugs are most often developed under time pressure and limited resources, yet manufacturers are responsible for evaluating drug products for storage, shipment, and shelf life in every climate zone the drug will be distributed. In an ideal world, the team would have unlimited time and a large supply of API material for the team to run tests that explore various drug forms and delivery systems for consumers. Fortunately, forced segregation studies can simulate multiple climate zones from one site. The World Health Organization and ICH have divided the world into five climate zones. And these zones have specific temperature and relative humidity ranges that guide stability testing and must happen to qualify pharmaceutical drug for a given zone. For example, zone one is made of temperate zones, including parts of North America and Asia, while zone five is on the opposite scale with hot and very humid conditions and includes parts of South, Af South America, Africa, and Asia. Stability testing can be performed from two types of technologies, environmental chambers or light chambers. Depending on the force segregation protocol required, one or the other may be the best fit. The environmental chamber contains an inner chamber that controls temperature and humidity and can be run according to a program, while light chambers can control light in addition to the temperature and humidity. And this is particularly necessary for comprehensive package testing. Throughout this presentation, I covered several variables and testing parameters that need to be considered to formulate and ultimately deliver a safe and effective pharmaceutical product. A reliable chamber can provide five main benefits. First, accurate data is of utmost importance throughout the drug development process. Second, a reliable chamber can facilitate testing that accounts for different climate zones using just one piece of technology, which increases productivity during drug development. Third and fourth, to facilitate an efficient process, an easy to use chamber that has safety protocols to protect the user ensures that testing is completed safely, quickly, and easily. Lastly, a chamber that can be used for several modes of testing, as well as configured exactly to one's protocol and batch sizing, further supports a productive process. Now I'll hand off to Bernie to introduce thermal scientific, pharma, environmental, and light chambers. Thank you, Felicia, for that informative discussion on drug stability. When thinking about this application, it is important to consider a chamber that meets certain requirements, namely tight parameters and repeatable performance that is required to validate the efficacy, stability, and life of a drug product. An important aspect of any testing is temperature uniformity. Directed airflow would minimize the risk of product desiccation and loss, along with wasted time and additional cost uh, due to the poor temperature uniformity and recovery. Additionally, the airflow system should ensure air airflow uniformity regardless of the sample load. Your particular testing likely includes parameters Felicia mentioned. When considering a chamber, think about your testing protocols and compliance needs. You may need, you may be looking for a controlled temperature and humidity or a wide temp range for storage or incubation, elevated temperature testing or light stability testing to meet the ICH guidelines for photostability under Q1B guidelines. Speaking of the light application, a typical light process is to expose the sample to X lux hours and watts per square meter of UV light. Some safety and control features to look for are temperature extremes and automatic light shutoff. To help visualize the animation that allows for viewing of the Thermo Fisher Scientific Light Chamber platform. Let's take a look. This view shows the uh, 29 cubic foot chamber with its rugged uh, solid construction helps with reliability, 18 gauge cold rolled steel exterior, which will resist scratching, stainless steel interiors, and a foam insulation to help with uniformity and strength. 
this tool will allow for 360 degree rotation of the instrument. The business end, if you will, is at the top of the unit. This will give the user full access to the chamber. All units are incorporate a temperature watt low controller. This is a, a, an industry standard, very tight control parameters, along with over temperature and under temperature dial in parameters. Units that incorporate a humidity function will also have an, an additional watt low controller, very specific to the humidity of that particular unit. Additionally, units that have a light component like this unit here will also have controls for the light function within the chamber itself. Other switch compressor system for refrigeration, defrost, and humidity system. Let's take a look at the inside of the chamber. This will give you a good idea on how the chamber looks with the light components installed. So this unit, the 29 cubic foot, incorporates three of the light cassettes I mentioned earlier. Each of those cassettes contains seven bulbs that would be unique for the particular light application. Additionally, the stainless steel shelves, as depicted here, will allow the user for distance from the lights for their particular applications. The standard 29 cubic foot unit would have the three light cassettes as we see here. We can easily pull out the lights as shown here and adjust the lights along the side walls with the rails that, that are incorporated with the system itself. Additionally, the stainless steel shelves depicted here can achieve the same thing. You can move the shelves up or down depending upon your application. Speaking of the shelves, we have other, other shelving operations, uh, other shelving options that would include perforated shelves and reinforced shelves for apparatus that you might want to place inside the unit that is beyond the weight of the standard shelf. Additionally, we have found over time that a lot of uh, applications require external probes. We've incorporated a two inch access port on every single unit that is, uh, is produced regardless of its function. I'd like to talk here about the addition of the, uh, ac uh, what we call the smart view sensors where it's, it's probe specific for, um, for any application. You can, you can have it for temperature, humidity, or with the size of the port that you could pass through as many umbilicals uh, as you need to for, uh, for your testing convenience. Let's go back to the presentation now and answer some of your questions. While we're doing that, the you can ask for a tour uh, at any point in time, and we'll be happy to take you through on a more in-depth level for uh, the instrument. Michelle, do we have any questions? Uh, we do. Thank you, Felicia and Bernie, for your informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you would like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen, and we'll answer as many questions as we have time for. All right, we have lots of great questions coming in. Let's go ahead and start with this first question. This one's for you, Felicia. What effect does humidity have on drugs? Thanks, Michelle. Sure, I touched on this one uh, a bit quickly in the presentation. And so humidity introduces moisture into a drug or pharmaceutical product, however you may want to call it, which affects the stability, and especially depending on the dosage form. So for example, tablets and capsules degrade when exposed to high moisture and loses its effectiveness. Okay, great, thank you. Looks like we have another question for you here, Felicia. What changes to drugs would a stability profile provide? What changes to drugs would a stability profile provide? Sure thing. Uh, a drug stability profile summarizes the stability results for a given drug under different temperature, humidity, light, and pH. 
and the results of these studies inform what packaging and container closure system one might use, as well as inform the recommended storage guidelines. Uh, an example of this is a, a light-sensitive pharmaceutical product may be packaged in a light-blocking amber bottle, or if the dosage form is a tablet, that may be coated with a film. Uh, so, th so those are the types of things that a stability profile would be able to uh, let you know and what changes you might want to make as a result. Thank you, Felicia. All right, this next question is for you, Bernie. Do I need a water source inside my lab to operate an environmental chamber? Oh, I think you might be muted. You want to go ahead and unmute? There we go. Oh, sorry. I thought I I thought I unmuted. Uh, that, yeah, very good question. Uh, that, uh, especially with the chambers that offer humidity, uh, as there is a, a high consumption. The gravity that fed by a carboy, and we can help uh, work. Okay, great. Thank you. Additional questions? Mm -hmm. All right, Felicia, this next question is for you. How do I get started with designing my stability test? Oh, this is an exciting question. Great. So there, there, are, there are different, there are many different important factors that you, one should consider when designing and conducting stability studies. And so this would depend on the drug or substance, the drug substance or drug product being tested. Right. Um, what you want to make sure of is that your uh, program confirms the assay purity and impurities over time and under different environmental factors. Um, so that means that the design will vary depending on what you're looking for and whether or not you're testing a drug substance or drug product. Um, one thing to make sure is accounted for, especially, which gets missed, is the amount of material required um, ahead of time. And then going above this to have at least 25% more as backup material. Um, this is important because it can be tricky trying to figure out the, the timing availability and the quantity. So making sure that um, some time has been taken to figure out the amount of material needed and then bumping that up to account for some backup is one of a, is a good strategy around making sure one is prepared for their stability testing, but also should be um, considered when designing their test too. All right, wonderful, thank you. Okay, Bernie, this next question is for you. What are my options for counteracting the condensate discharge generated within the chamber? Michelle, we actually offer three options to uh, mitigate the condensate. One, which is the, the, the best option that I, I think of, is having a drain close to the unit. It will, it, there's no uh, back pressure, so this would drain right into your existing drain at the facility. If that's not available, we also offer a condensate evaporator where the uh, condensate would evaporate as it uh, uh, as it hits the evaporation mechanism. If that's not uh, uh, acceptable, then we also offer a pump that will pump the condensate to a drain nearby. Uh, my personal experience is that pump is very powerful and will will actually pump the water for a pretty good distance. Thank you, Bernie. All right, Felicia, this question's for you. Are there different testing considerations for biologics? Sure, sure, yes. Um, so yes, there is. Um, though the, the considerations are the same uh, as for a, a normal drug substance or drug product, but since biologics are more of a kind of a next generation type product, the stability testing uh, is a little bit more involved than other well-characterized products. And specifically ICHQ5C would be a good guideline to look up because there are some guidelines there that are specifically for biologics. So I would direct you um, to look that up and it's available online. 
All right, great, thank you. All right, Bernie, it looks like this question might be for you as well. Um, what comes standard with the purchase of a light chamber? Oh, another great question, Michelle. So the, 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 the way to think about it is capabilities. The, the standard unit for light capabilities comes with the ability to not only run the light uh, aspect of the chambers, but also run all the other aspects of the chamber. And what I mean by that is the, with the capabilities to install the light cassettes that I showed on the, uh, the 3D tour. Each of those light cassettes then would be purchased individually. Uh, while the 29 cubic foot unit can accommodate three light cassettes, you may not require that for your application, so you would only need to balance of the chamber to use for, for another purpose. So again, the unit comes with the light capabilities and the, the light cassettes for your particular application are purchased separately. Good question. Thank you, Bernie. We have another question for you here. Do these chambers work for products other than drugs, for example, like foods or plants or soils, et cetera? Wow, that's another great question, Michelle. And, and yes, absolutely. So that leads to the versatility of the instrument that I just mentioned, where the, uh, the light cassettes, the light frequency of those cassettes are for different applications either for uh, insect studies, plant growth, stability under Q1B. So a very versatile system. Uh, you can purchase one or more of the cassettes and use for variant applications. So time, but you could run them in succession. Good question. Okay. Felicia, I have another question for you here. Can you expose your drugs product to different testing conditions in your equipment at the same time? And how do you control the different conditions? Sure. Can you, I'll, I'll break it down part by part. Um, can you expose your drug product to different testing conditions in your equipment at the same time? I uh, know. <laughs> The, the 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 chamber at least uh, my my direct reference is the environmental chambers that i manage um and and on the market they tend to be one inner chamber and so within this inner chamber the conditions are the same throughout they're uniform in fact one of the things you you should look for in a reliable environmental chamber is one that has um very accurate um temperature uniformity and stability throughout the chamber and so that you can make sure that every area of that chamber is being exposed to the exact same thing. And so with that, you can only um, expose your drug product to the same thing at the same time. You can't run any parallel uh, operations there. And so how do you control the different conditions? Well, your controls that have to do with your temperature, our range is from zero to 60, which is a typical uh, stability testing range and you can control temperature as well as your humidity, um, which can range depending on, uh, depending on the requirements that you have, um, all of which you would um, control from directly on your machine and you'd run over a specific amount of time per your, per your uh, stability program that you've put together. Right. The only thing that I would add to what Felicia said is that if, like I just mentioned, if you had one cassette, light cassette in the chamber, you could run a light test at that level of the chamber, and then you could run some other static tests uh, on, on other shelves. How uh, atmosphere inside the chamber, the conditions inside the chamber would be the same ever, uh, with respect to All right, great, thank you both. Okay, this next question is for you, Felicia. Does the stability of the drug get affected by the high temperatures in developing countries? And what action can you take when there is an electrical outage? 
Yes, that's a good uh, kind of real life practical question when, especially when running the stability testing in that uh, developing country. So to address the first part of your question, how does high temperature affect uh, the, the pharmaceutical product? It can have a variety of effects, which is why it's such a key thing to monitor. Um, it can have physical effects where, um, especially depending on the dosage form, it may have some physical impacts. Uh, there may be chemical chemical effects as well as microbiological. So depending on the uh, amount of time that 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 um, drug has been exposed to the high temperature, you may see some growth, uh, some some kind of vi viral, or it, it, it really depends on what what it's been exposed to. And so another reason why these stability testing um, profiles are really important in making sure that one is accounting for all the different factors that um, one's drug may be uh, exposed to. And so what happens when there's an electrical outage? Well, that study should be run all over again, unfortunately. Um, there are some products where um, the, the chamber will restart for you and will let you know. And so you'll want to look for a, a chamber that provides some kind of alert to you that the temperature inside your, your uh, environmental chamber, for example, has deviated. Um, because what you want to make sure first and foremost is that you're exposing that drug to the same temperature, same humidity, uh, overall same environmental factors throughout the spe specified amount of time that you had set from the beginning. So ideally you should start over. Thanks for that question. Okay, great. All right, Bernie, this next question is for you. What are the feed water requirements for environmental chambers? Well, that's another good question, Michelle. We had talked earlier about um, water sources. Uh, it uses uh, uh, active humidity, and so we don't make a presumption about the condition of tap water. Uh, so the water purity needs to have a resistance range from 50 to 1 mega ohm. Typically, that would be, you know, you have DI water at your facility, water that would be preferable for this system. A lot of institutions have a DI line, a pressurized line, that would help uh, with the feed. And we can provide the documentation to anyone who needs that. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. All right, Felicia, this one's for you. Is there a difference between stress testing or integration testing and accelerated testing? Yes, yes, there is. Uh, well, for segregation, well, sorry, there isn't a difference. <laughs> um, there, there, for segregation is also known as stress testing, but there's different types of stress testing um, which can include accelerated, intermediate, and long-term testing. Thanks for that question. Great. Okay, next question is for Bernie. Can I run the light chamber without light using only temperature and humidity? Yes, absolutely. That is this instrument. And I often talk to uh, folks about uh, the type of chamber that they're looking for. And if you have any uh, protocols where you're going to run light either now or later on, have the unit that has the capability. And then you could run the chamber temperature humidity without the light cassettes in there. And then later on, when you have light protocols uh, that you need to meet, then you could add the All right. This next question is for you, Felicia. Um, and it's, why would you use a photo chamber? Yes, why would you use a photo chamber? Uh, I'm assuming why would you use a photo chamber instead of a stability chamber? 
and the key reason would be that the light chamber has um, light cassettes, as Bernie has talked about, and maybe you could add some more um, to my answer, Bernie. The, the stability chamber can't be used for the light stability or the photo stability testing that one might use. And that can be, be a key study uh, for your, your drug because of the fact that packaging can um, affect the, the storage, um, the shelf life, and that will actually ultimately affect the shelf life of the drug. And so your packaging would ideally support that shelf life and would support it for as long as that, that re recommended shelf life is. And so to be able to run a photo stability testing on that would make sure that light is a factor that's been accounted for in that packaging and also in that shelf life uh, determination. Anything to add? Yeah, that, that's, that's correct, uh, Felicia. No, you know, the only thing is we, you know, to bring it home to everyone, we all have you know, medicines in our, uh, in our cabinets. And if you look at the, the uh, opaqueness of the, uh, the vessels, whether either for ourselves or our pets, those have all been tested uh, for photo stability of those drugs within those containers. All right. Looks like we have time for one more, one last question here. This is for Bernie. Is um, how do I request a demo? Well, that's that's excellent. We the the best way uh, is, is via your local. Uh, you can go to the website uh, www backslash chambers and select con the contact us button and you fill out the form and that will get you connected with the product specialist and as I mentioned earlier I'm involved in a lot of the thank you Michelle you're very welcome um, so I want to thank you both, Felicia and Bernie, for your time today. Do you have any final comments for our audience before we go? Sure thing. Thank you, Michelle, and thank you, LabRoots, for this platform. Bernie and I have really enjoyed sharing our knowledge here today on drug stability tests and testing technology. If you have any questions, um, please feel free again to visit us at thermofesher.com slash chambers and select the Contact Us button. Uh, where you'll see a form and you'll get connected directly to a product specialist. And thank you for your time and I hope that you've learned something today here about drug stability testing. Yes, I, I echo what Felicia just said. Thank you very much for your time. Great questions. And we're happy to assist you in any way we can. Wonderful. Well, thank you again, Felicia and Bernie, for your time today and for your important research. We would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Thermo Fisher Scientific, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. This webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye.